at his right hand pleasures forevermore. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for what you've already done today. The healings that have already taken place, the deliverance, the victory, Lord, that we always have in you. We give you praise for it now, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're continuing to do in each and every one of us, revealing yourself more and more. We bless you for it and thank you. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Give him a hand this morning. Praise God. Praise Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Great job, as always. And uh, Mike and Jody and Suzanne for leading us in worship. Praise the Lord. Thank all of you for sharing your testimonies and prayer requests. And just whatever God has laid on your heart, hallelujah. That's how the Spirit speaks to us, hallelujah, in that way. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you all for being here this morning. A cold and blustery day in Iowa, praise the Lord. Hopefully one of the last ones, last uh, cold and blustery ones I'm talking about, yeah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, amen. We never know, amen, but... Uh, Thank the Lord. Amen. Welcome everyone who's joining us on Facebook and live streaming. We appreciate you being a part of the service today. God bless you wherever you are. And uh, I know the presence of the Lord is with you as well. Praise God. That's great. Amen. God is good. Amen. And so we're going to, hallelujah, move right into the word of God this morning. Appreciate the testimonies. As always, they bear witness to what uh, the Spirit is speaking to each and every one of us in his own way unique to each of us, praise the Lord. And I want to uh, just begin with uh, Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Praise the Lord. I may have uh, several scriptures here in the beginning, or the first part of this, because I don't, I'm not going to use it too awful many throughout the message, although I usually do a lot. I, I, I'll, there'll be scriptures there, but just won't, maybe not quite as many as I would normally use. But Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 14 and 15. This is the, kind of the wrapping up of uh, God dealing with uh, man and the devil mm -hmm. for the uh, man's failure and uh, what looked like a devil's success. Amen. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, just... Uh, as a side here, this is all of humanity. It isn't just about Jesus and the devil. It's all of the woman's seed. So we're in this battle as well, in Christ, right? So he tells us what the, what the outcome will be, amen? So let's go to Luke chapter 1 now in uh, verse 67. Luke 67, 1, excuse me, Luke 1, verse 67 through 75. Luke 1, 67 through 75. Praise the Lord. So he's going to bruise our heel, but we're going to crush his head. Amen. Now this is after uh, Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, had been struck dumb, mute, because of his kind of questioning God's word about what he was going to do uh, and, uh, and giving birth uh, through Zachariah's wife who was elderly and uh, should not have normally been able to conceive a child and then the name of the child as well and because uh, everybody obviously assumed that he would name it Zachariah or another uh, you know name like that instead of John just came out of the clear blue that that name didn't fit anybody other than the will of God amen 
So this is after he comes out of that, after he comes out of the temple and he's able to speak again. And this, it just, this is where he goes from here. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord of God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That horn represents strength or power. And so as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which, he, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. So as I said, the seed of the woman isn't just Jesus, it's everybody, it's all of us, amen, as believers especially. But I want you to, if you hear the words prophesied by Zechariah, you can understand why the Jewish people uh, maybe didn't understand Jesus or didn't recognize his coming. Because Israel thought Rome was going to be defeated. This is what it sounds like in this prophetic word coming from Zechariah. Is that, hey, it's all cool because the Messiah is going to be born here directly. John the Baptist is going to be his forerunner. And then, based on the prophecy, your enemies are all going to get defeated. It's going to be happy fun days from now on, right? I mean, that's what they're hearing. That's what, that's what, they're, what the Lord is saying to them. So Israel thought Rome's going to be defeated. We're going to be delivered from our enemies. But they didn't recognize that this deliverance was spiritual first. Yes. Amen. The coming of the Messiah, a manifestation of God. Right. And I wonder, and this is what I've been talking about. We talked about it a little bit Wednesday night. And, uh, but what are we expecting? Yeah. See, what are, we, what are we really looking for? An election to be overturned? I hope so. But you know what I'm saying? What's our focus? The defeat of some party? Or the, the powers that be? Or a manifestation of God? And the defeat of the demonic that is behind all of this. Because if we don't deal with the core problem... The spiritual issue, this crap just keeps coming back anyhow. It, it ain't going away until we defeat the reason for the problem. So are we as confused about God's purposes as they were? I wonder, as a church I'm talking about now. It's about getting closer to God. It's about relationship and dependence on God, not on a government, not on my strength, as Don was talking about, not what I can do, but what God can do if I will believe, if I will just stand in faith and trust Him. Amen? Faith in the Word of God. In the middle of the crisis. With the enemy controlling the territory. Praise the Lord. In Acts, after the manifestation... Rome was still there. They still had the same problems. In fact, they were being drugged. Some of them were being killed already. Some of them were being thrown into prison. They were certainly being brought before the magistrates, before the government and, and uh, the powers that be. And what did they do? They said, <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> I know that's crude, but that's basically what they were saying in a little more spiritual way. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying they, they said, God, give us boldness. They didn't say, just take away all of our problems. We're scared crapless because this, is, this guy's nuts and the people are taking over and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff to our kids and all this, is, this madness and everything else. No, they said, give us boldness to speak the word of God. Amen. With boldness, that signs and wonders may be done by your holy child, Jesus. They didn't just say, God, just take away all of our problems and let us live in luxury now. They recognized the Lord had come for a reason. And that was for them to rise up 
and be the body of Christ and do what he had empowered them to do by the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that God won't step in and do things. It just means that should not be our agenda. Our agenda should be focused on what God wants me to do, not what I want God to do. I just, I, I want us to see how we are the body of Christ. In the, in the readings for the week, in the Hebrew readings for the week, now this is in a, uh, the, the Tree of Life uh, Bible, it's a Messianic family Bible, but it, it, so it also puts some New Testament scripture in there just to round it all out, to keep it uh, legitimate, right? With the Messianic Jews. And it starts out, in Genesis 18, and it's about Isaac and him, for this week, that's what it's on, and it's about Abraham takes Isaac, you know, and he offers him up, and God delivers him, gives him a, a, a goat, right? right? Gives him the lamb as a substitute sacrifice. So Isaac, according to the scripture, he's brought back from death, right. because as far as Abram was concerned, he's going to die. Right. And as far as God was concerned, Abraham was going to kill him. Right. Or he would not have provided the go. That's why he said stop. He had confidence that Abram was going to do what he said he to do. Yeah. Yeah. Give your son, your only son. Mm -hmm. So Isaac comes back to life. Well, then you get into 2 Kings, I think it's 2 Kings, and you have the Shunammite woman with the, the prophet comes and she builds him a little room, gives him a place to stay and feeds him. And, and he says, what can I do for you? Well, she doesn't have a, a son. Right. So he says, a year from now, I'm going to come back. It's kind of like the same. Sounds just like what he said to Abram and Sarah. You know, in the season, I'm going to come back in the full season. In other words, nine months from now, I'll be back and you're going to be having a kid. So he says the same thing to the Shunammite woman. You're going to have a child in due season in a year. In nine months, you're going to have this child. So she does. And then it says at some point, the kid goes out with his dad to work and he has a horrible headache. He has a seizure of some kind and they bring him back to the house and he dies in his mother's lap. She puts him on the bed, doesn't say anything. He's dead. And she says, give me a donkey and one of the servants and let's go to the man of God. So she goes to the prophet. She says, you know, I didn't ask for this. Did you just do this to mess with me, to make my life miserable? What's the matter? All is well. He's dead. I need, you know, so the prophet comes. He goes in three times. He lays on the yeah. child. Body begins to warm up. He breathes yeah. into him the breath of life. Yes. And he sneezes seven times. Yeah. And he's alive again. A dead man raised from the dead. Yep. Yep. And then we have Jesus. He dies. And he's raised from the dead. And he tells us that everyone that's in Christ will have a like resurrection. In fact, in the mind of God, we're already raised. Yes, we are. Just the same as Isaac was our, even though he was going to die, he knew as far as God was concerned, he ain't dead. He may die, but he's not really dead because he's coming back. Same way with the Shunammite son, same way with Jesus. It's the same way with us. Amen. We're, we're as good as resurrected as Jesus. As, as far as God's concerned, even though it may be 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, whatever, however long before we need to be resurrected, it's as good as done as far as God's concerned. He's seen the end from the beginning. Yeah. It isn't a big deal. We're, we're, it's not a big deal. Any more than it was a big deal for him to, to, to uh, substitute for Isaac right. or to raise the Shunammite kid right. or Jesus. Or us. It's just what God does. He's, that's Him. Yep. He is resurrection life. Yes. Amen. So look at Matthew chapter 11, 25 through 29. Matthew 11, 25 through 29. 
And keep this in mind, because we're going to get back to this uh, ultimately. He's going to bruise our heel. But we're going to crush his head. We're going to crush his head, but not without a price. But the price is minimal compared to what we're going to do to him. Doesn't, it will be uncomfortable. How about your heel, Sally? Yeah. See, she's got a heel issue, and it bothers her. So I'm just saying, it can be painful. Yeah. But nothing like having your head crushed. Praise the Lord. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and I am, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for your emotions, for your mind. All right? John chapter 6, verse 37 through 40. John 6, 37 through 40. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Yes. Yeah. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. John 17 Verse 3 through 23. John 17, verse 3 through 23. I told you there was quite a few scriptures here at the beginning, but we'll get past it. John 17, 3, verse 23. And this is a life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father... Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was in them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, 
that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Praise the Lord. A lot of oneness going on there, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Praise the Lord. Exodus 28, verse 30 through 36. And you'll have to go back and read these scriptures from Exodus 26 up through about 30 to get all of this. I don't have time to go into every bit of it, uh, but it's about the, the high priest being robed in his garments and so on and so forth. And I'll, I'll touch on some of it, but to get the whole thing, you'll have to go back and read it. It just isn't time for us to go cover it all uh, directly. So, thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. Now we all know Jesus. This is just a type of Jesus. He is our high priest. Yes. And so uh, he, as he, on his heart as he goes before the Lord continually. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all of blue. And there shall be a hole in the top of it. In the midst thereof it shall have a binding of woven work round about the hole of it as it were the whole of a habergeon, that it be not rent. And beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet, round about the hem thereof, and the bells of the gold between them round about. Praise the Lord. A golden bell and pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. He's just saying a golden bell, pomegranate, then another golden bell and a pomegranate and another bowl, all the way around the, the hem of the robe. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord and when he cometh out that he die not. Praise the Lord. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like this graving of a signet, holiness to the Lord. Romans 15 verse 4. All these things, all the Old Testament, all the Old Covenant, all of the tabernacle, everything is for our benefit, is for us to learn something from, mm -hmm. not just a historic evidence of, of wardrobes or whatever. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay, so the, the unity of the Jewish people based on these scriptures was reflected in the three primary garments of the high priest, or in our case, Jesus, amen? The name of the tribes that were engraved on the breastplate, amen, that was resting on the high priest's heart signified the righteous among us. So there was a certain number of tribes that were on the breastplate, right up next to the heart of the high priest. And they represented the, uh, the, the righteous, the righteous Jews at the time, or in our case, it would be the righteousness of God, those, are, that, those that are living for Christ. Amen? Amen? And the names of the tribe that were engraved on the ephod, which was on his back, this thing was like a, the way he's described it to us here is the, the breastplate's here, and it has a, holes in, in the top of it with a loop or with chains or ribbons, and that holds the breastplate and the ephod together. The ephod then is on the back, and it goes all the way down. The breastplate comes down and covers the the heart area. So the, 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 the breastplate represents then the righteous among us. The names of the tribes engraved on the ephod, which mainly covered the high priest's back, it signified the formerly estranged Jews who had returned to Jewish observances. In other words, for, in our case, it would be like people that had backslid, if you want to call it backsliding, you know, that have wandered away from the Lord and then come back. Okay, so that's you know, that's the comparison, all right? And then the bells and the pomegranates of the robe signified the Jews that were still struggling with their evil inclinations, with people who were not really born again. They're, you know, it's, it's like our children's, or children, teach them in the ways of the Lord and they will not depart from it. Well, we know that's not necessarily true. They will, they don't depart from it, they just wander off. 
but they will be coming back because the seed has been sown and God has told us you and your house shall be saved. And so that's what he's talking about here. These are people that are really not living a Jewish life. Uh, they're not observing the, the rituals. They're not obeying the laws. They're Jews. They're just not such good Jews, right? Those are the ones that are, that are uh, defined by the pomegranates and the bells that are on the hem, on the, the lower part of the, of the garment, right? So all of the Jews had to be represented. They had to be because they were all part of God's family, right? Just like with us, we all have, we're all represented in, in Christ. Whether we're living gung-ho for God, whether we're kind of just, you know, like we've all been at times, just a little lukewarm or whatever, or if we're just in total rebellion and just struggling, just gone nuts, right? They all still had to be represented. And that's what the garments re represent here. So all of the Jews had to be represented when the high priest entered into the sanctuary or into the presence or the holy place, into the presence of God for mercy, right? So the, when he entered into that sanctuary, and the reason for that was because he had to invoke the blessing that's common to all the people. Okay? So I hope you're, you're getting that. Praise the Lord. Look at Exodus 27, verse 20 and 21. So in other words, Jesus is carrying all of us wherever we are in our spiritual life, you know, from time to time. He carries us always into the presence of God. Doesn't it say he forever makes intercession on our behalf? Just as the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, Jesus is always in the Holy of Holies. And he's bearing each and every one of us, wherever we happen to be at the moment. Exodus 27, verse 20 and 21. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive, beaten for the light, it's for the lamps, for the, for the menorahs, to cause the lamp to burn always in the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony. Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever under their generations on behalf of the children of Israel. So the word command there, he says, command them to do this, to, to bring the oil, the olive oil in so that the lamps will always have oil. So they'll always be burning. So the light will always be there. Amen. And so that word in Hebrew, the word command is actually zipha or zipha. And that word also means connect. So Moses told these people what he was saying is tell them, connect the people. It's not just about give them an order. It's about connect them together, bring them together, get them connected. Amen. And so it was to connect them to this infinite light. Now Rick realizes that everything for them is stuff. It's things you do. It's, it's effort. It's clothes. It's, it's, it's something. But it's really about God. And he, when he's telling us, when he's showing this to us, he's telling us this is a spiritual union. We need, we need to be connected spiritually. That's why it's so important that we have the testimonies yeah. and the things that we have. And a lot of people come and they're just visitors and they think, what the heck? You know, I mean, can't you find something better to do than just everybody give this little, you know, spiel? No, it's, it, we're saying what we feel the Holy Spirit has been dealing with us about. And the next thing you know, somebody else says something, somebody else says something, and it connects us. Yes. Because not everybody's going to say something, but everybody will say, oh, yeah, I'm... I've been dealing with that. I've been thinking about that, or I've had an issue similar to that. So it's the connection, and that's what he's saying. He's, he make this connection, and it's it's a connection that connects us not just to each other, but to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. So it connects them to one another to become a single people, which is the thing with the ephod and the and the and the breastplate and the hem, right? Connect them. At this essential level, at this spiritual level, is what he's talking about. Amen. It's where they where they hold this pure source of light. That light is just a light for the priest to go around and do his stuff without tripping over his own garments. But it represents the light of God, the true light, the real light, the light that is to light us from the inside out. The presence of God. Amen. And he says so they so that they had this. Bring them to this place so that they will discover. Because how do you connect them, right? Yeah. 
bring them to this place so they'll discover within themselves that they have this pure inner oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit, the oil of, of anointing, amen, that we'll recognize it amongst ourselves, yeah. with our own self and with one another. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I hope I'm not getting too biz weird, but they will rise and shine in the darkness. Yeah. That's the idea is for us to have light. Make them discover they have this inner light, this inner oil, this Holy Spirit. Be aware of it. Be conscious of it. Not just me, but you got the same one I've got. We got it. This is what we have. This is what God has given us. Amen. And so that that light will shine in the darkness. The darkness is what crushes our soul. It's what crushes our bodies. It's what depresses us and frightens us and, and keeps us in, in fear and anxiousness yep. amen and it will cause that cr then if, if it's there what he's saying is then when the crushing comes when the pressure comes when the fear and the anxiety comes it will actually bring out an even finer oil it will cr it, that, that pressure will bring out a the real you the who you really are the anointing and the holy spirit because you yeah you will come to the place that that Don was talking about this morning. You go, I can't do this. I mean, I'm not equipped. I got to look deeper. I got to look past that guy in the mirror, or that girl in the mirror. I got to find where I, what I'm really made of in order to accomplish what I got to accomplish because this thing is going nuts. And it ain't right. And I'm not here just to take up space. I'm here for a reason. I have been put here for such a time as this. I could have been born in 1840, but I wasn't. I was born in 1948. So, you know, there was a reason for that. And it's true for every one of us. And when that crushing comes, when that pressure comes, instead of us running scared, we rise and shine in the darkness. Amen. And it brings out this finer oil. And then because of that, then we even shine in the daylight. Yes. So even when the pressure is not on, even when there isn't a major crisis going on, I'm still walking in the Spirit. I'm still having an effect. I'm still affecting people and situations and circumstances before they can even happen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Exodus 27, verse 20 again. Thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil. So connect them with this pure oil, all it beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Praise the Lord. Bring the purest oils for this, for this eternal flame, for this flame that's never to go out. It's to be burning all the time, representative of, of the light of the Spirit, yeah. the presence of God. And connect, use it to connect us together. So we can be divided by some doctrine. We can be divided by some revelation that God has given me personally, maybe, or given to you personally, but not necessarily to me. I don't have to have all of it, especially if you got it. I can, I can feed off of yours. And you can feed off of mine. That's the purpose for us all being together. Because when we are connected from the inner being, from the spirit man, amen, then we're not just connected to the light. We are connected to the luminary, or in other words, the source of the light. So it isn't just my light. It's not just your light. It's the light. That's what we're connecting with. My light just bears witness to your wit to your light, right? I mean, well, the spirit bears witness to, with the spirit. So we kind of we can jive, we can get along, we can understand, we can relate, amen. But the bigger purpose is that it joins us and unites us to the light, the light of God, the who God is and what God is doing in us and through us. Yes. Yes. Amen. So, because here's the deal, Don talked about it. We've all been there. The light can rise up and it can flicker. Yeah. I mean, I can have the Holy Spirit and I can be fired up and go like gangbusters one day. And the next day I can be yeah. kind of depressed and bummed out, wonder why that didn't work out or this didn't happen or that. So the light, my light can rise 
It can flare up, but it can also flicker. It can also be at a times when, when you think, <laughs> keep this thing going, it's about to burn out, right? But the source of the light never changes. It's always burning. It's always, there's no threat of it being blown out, burned out. Amen. It goes forever. Amen. Amen. And so we've got the same job. Every one of us. And that's to be the light. And to, to discover our connection with the essence of light. Or the source of light. We're the light. We're to recognize that we are a light. But the reason for that light is to help us to connect with the light. Yeah. To remind us continuously of our connection. Yeah. Exodus, uh, excuse me, Exodus 28, 28. Chapter 28, verse 28. They shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof under the rings of the ephod, with a lace of blue. I talked about that's just, it's like a vest similar kind of in a way. With a lace of blue that it may be above the curious girdle of the ephod and that the breastplate be not loosed from the ephod. They cannot be separated. They need to be together all the time. That's why they have them bound together front and back, right? So the ephod hung from the high priest's back all the way down to his heels. And the breastplate rested in front opposite the heart, or in just over the heart. Now the back represents what is external, what is just, you could say carnal, natural, fleshly, right? The aspects of life that are necessary, but they aren't the focus or the main interest. Okay? I mean, we all, we're, we're spirit beings, but we still got stuff we got to do, right? And that's what the ephod represents. It, it represents the mundane, you could say, the, the natural things that you have to do just to get through your day. You got a job to do, you got whatever, if, you don't, if you're retired, you've got other stuff that you have to have done and has to be taken care of, and the grocery shop, and you know, the cleaning the car, getting the oil change, whatever it might be, any, any of those things. They're necessary, they, they need to be done, but they're not the main focus. They're, they're just some natural stuff, just fleshly stuff, all right? And so that's what the, that's what the ephod represents, uh, things that are necessary, but they aren't the main interest. Now, in contrast to that, in the front, the, the, the breastplate, it signifies the internal and the spiritual, or the real focus of our interests what our real focus should be. And it's interesting because it's the same way they identified the, the, the breastplate had the tribes, of the, the, the tribes that were really in tune with God, that were really working with God. The ephod were the people who were kind of not really, you know, they had wandered away, but they can't come back, but they're not totally in sync right yet. Okay, so it's, it has the same kind of uh, signification, I guess you could say. So in contrast, this front signifies the internal and the spiritual focus of the person, of the being, right? It's like our face. <laughs> Believe it or not, it actually expresses, much to our chagrin at times, uh, whatever our inner thoughts or feelings are. Right. Unless you're really good at a poker face, right? right. Uh, it's in the front. And what you're feeling, a lot of times, will come out even though you don't know it's coming out. And that's why somebody will say, what's the matter? And you say, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you know? So anyway, that's, that's the point. It's in the front. And, and the fact that the breastplate has to be connected all the time, it cannot become disconnected from the ephod, which means that the high priest, and you think about this, they, that's why they would keep the high priest awake all night the night before he would go into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement, for fear that he would have a carnal dream, carnal thoughts. Ephod thoughts. So that the reason for the ephod and the, another reason for the ephod and the breastplate to be connected was, was so that the, the breastplate would be connected to it, which means that the high priest was not allowed to have any gap between the spirit and the natural. In other words, the spirit had to be dominating everything. 
all right? So the essential inner being and the external aspects of his life had to be dominant. Am I making sense? What God is saying to us, you're, you're at a time now where the breastplate has to be the dominant force. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. In other words, what's true in our hearts ought to be expressed even in our heels. Amen. What's true in the spirit, the supernatural, ought to be evident in the routine aspects of our life. I'm not trying to put a guilt trip or laws or rules. I'm just saying we ought to be living so in tune with the spirit that we can't help ourselves. We're not trying to do what some religious, and we've experienced, all experienced it to some degree, dress a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way, so that everybody can see how spiritual I am. No, because we know you can be as unspiritual as dirt and look, yeah. you know. So this is about, so that it emanates. It just, yeah. it just people go, what's up? You know, something's going on. What's happening here? You know, I'm, I'm sensing something. You know, I'm feeling that, could you pray for me? Right. You know, I mean, just things that we don't normally experience on a regular basis right. should start happening. Right. Praise the Lord. So, okay, Isaiah 60, uh, verse 1 through 3. I, I'm telling you, I'm not, I, don't, I really don't want to, I'm not trying to make this about me because God knows I'm, I'm a mess as much as anybody, probably more. But clear back to last, early last spring. God was doing something, and I didn't ask for it. it. just He just did it. And I believe he's doing this with everybody. I think he's messing with everybody. Yeah. Now, we can kind of put it off and say, well, you know, it happened for you. Yeah, good. No, it's happening to everybody because it's yeah. the same spirit. It just happens in a different way because if it happened to you the same way it happened to me, you might have just freaked or who knows what. You know, I mean, because I'm kind of weird anyway, so it wasn't that weird <laughs> if you're already weird you know what I mean but I'm just saying I know I know because I know me I know my history to that place I know from where I was at that point and what it's been since then yeah. and it wasn't me it isn't me making it happen I'm, I'm cooperating because I know that this is something besides Nathan right. because otherwise I'd still be rocking on just like I was yep. not that it was horrible evil or anything it just wasn't as focused. Right. It wasn't the same. Right. And there's a reason for it. It isn't just so I can say, I had an epiphany. You know, it isn't just so I can say, I had this Jesus moment. No. God is wanting to do something yes. with me that he couldn't do where I was before, where, my, my, where I was too much ephod and not enough breastplate. Right. Wasn't evil, it just was too much of the natural. So arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Yeah. And the Gentiles, that's just simply unbelievers. Right. It's not ethnic groups. It's just you're either a believer or you're a Gentile. You're either a Jew or a Gentile. So, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. The unbelievers will come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Yes. Amen. Now, if, if you could see out these windows here today, praise the Lord. What would you see? You'd see cars. You'd see buildings. You'd see shrubs. You'd see trees, right? But what if it was nighttime? There was no light. You wouldn't see anything, right? We only see by the light of the sun. Now, I'm using that metaphorically, you know, but I'm just saying. We only see by the light of the sun. Right. Everything is illuminated by it, right? The beautiful and the ugly, yeah. the good and the bad, the holy and the unholy, mm -hmm. all across the world. Everything is lit up by the sun. Everything needs illumination, right? The lands, the oceans, the cities, the deserts, the churches, the jails, right? The hills of grass, the piles of garbage, the saints, the criminals, 
the good and the evil. It's the same light that reveals them all, that lights them all, right? right. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, you don't have to go there, Suzanne, but it's where Jesus said, bless those who curse you. I'm telling you, we're, see, we were hearing this stuff already before I ever got up here. That's why I can sit up there and go, praise the Lord. I'm just talking in tongues. And I'm excited because everything I'm hearing is God saying, see, I told you. And I'm going, I don't know if any, I, I don't even get half of this, Lord. What are you talking about? And then this all happens, and it's just like him saying, see, shut up and listen. Just do. Right? Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on evil and on the good. Yeah. What would happen if it was otherwise? Right. Is basically what the Lord said to me. You know, if the light only shone on the beautiful, right. if it didn't shine on the ugly, right. what would happen if the sun only gave its light to the good and to the righteous, but not to sinners and not to evildoers. See, I don't like this very much either because there's times when I could really call down fire. Yeah. I mean, I'm feeling just like the apostles. Yeah. Can't we call down fire and just rain fire down on them and yeah. get them out of here? They're so idiotic. They're so stupid. Yeah. They're so evil. They're so, yeah. right? But this is what God is telling us. I don't like it. But he didn't ask my opinion. No. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I, he didn't say, how do you feel about this, Nathan? No, he just, here it is. And what if the sun, and this is, what, this is the question that he asked me. What, what if the sun only shined on those that deserve the light? Or what if the sun only gave its light to those who blessed the sun? And it withheld its light from those who cursed the sun. Well, you say that would alter the world. Yeah. yeah, it would. But it would do more than alter the world. It would also alter the sun. Yeah. The source of the light. Because if it only shone on good and beautiful and worthy, then it would to that same degree cease to be light. Right. Yeah. If it only shined on the righteous and the holy and the Christians and didn't shine on the unjust and the evil, then that light would be diminished. That light would be less than light is. You see what God is saying? If I didn't, if the light didn't shine on everybody, if the rain didn't fall on the good and the evil, if the, if the light didn't shine on the, the just and the unjust, then I wouldn't be God. I couldn't be God. And here's the hard part. That's beautiful. The hard part is we're children of God. Yeah. And we have the same light. Yeah. And that's what he's saying when he says, let your light shine. Yeah. He's saying, you, you, you can diminish the reality of my light. You, you can diminish me. Yeah. You can take away from me yeah. by not being the light. This is what he's talking about in the temple when he says, bring the oil, connect them together, yeah. not just with one another, but with me, so they'll understand how important this eternal light is, that it must not go out, that it must always be burning. And it ha the only way for it to always be burning is if they would bring their oil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. I'm telling you, you already know this, but let me just say this. He's done messing around. Yeah, right. he is done messing around. And we think it's just, well, it's business as usual. No, it's not. It's not. I don't care how much we would like it to be. We've gotten comfortable over the last 40 or 50 years, living in a pretty good country, living with, you know, you know some rises and falls in, in economy and wars and things. But, but for the most part, pretty well taken care of. I'm telling you, this wasn't about Donald Trump, although I would vote for Donald Trump again yeah. tomorrow and prefer to have him back in office. You can all send hate mail. I don't care because I've already heard it all anyway, but I don't care. 
I'm just saying, he's not the answer. <laughs> the answer is Jesus. Yes. Because there'll always be another yeah. Jimmy Carter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there'll always be another Richard Nixon. Right. There'll always be another somebody. And no matter how good they are, they still have their negatives. They still have their flaws. Right. Yeah. And we cannot put our confidence. Look, we've had some great presidents, Ronald Reagan. I could name some other presidents over the years. But look at how corrupt this system is. It didn't just happen in the last 8, 10, 12 years. This has been going on for 100 years or longer, probably. Yes. So the answer is not just get me a good guy in there. Although we are obligated as citizens, we should be voting for people who have the same core values that we have, and hopefully those are Christian values, and vote for those people, but you have no guarantee that they're going to do what they say they're going to do because we've all seen it. Right. They promise you everything and give you, sick of, you know, yeah. a hard time once they get in. Yeah. Right. So, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Yes. Verse 16. Yet yeah, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven, because they know it isn't about us. It's about our God, yeah. the source of the light. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 44 and 45. Still in uh, verse, or chapter 5 there, Suzanne. Verse 44 and 45. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good. You want to know the sacrifice, the real sacrifice that we have? This is it. Yeah. This, is die, this is the dying to self. Yeah. It's not don't have that beer or don't drink that glass of wine. Or it, that's not the issue. That's not the problem. Yeah, it is if you're a drunk, you know, and, and you got all kinds of problems there. But I'm saying that's not his, that's not what he's focused on. What he's focused on is I'm telling you, you need to die to you because you do not want to do this. I know I don't want to do this. And I'm assuming you're not a whole lot different than me. You may be a little better, but there's flaws in all of us. And part of that flaw is I don't, bad people, I want to see them get bad consequences. I, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. If that don't make you swallow hard, you're not human. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. If that doesn't describe our government, yeah. it doesn't, doesn't say enjoy everything they're doing. It doesn't say agree with everything they're doing. It doesn't say join in with what they're doing. It yeah. just says forgive them. Vengeance is mine, yes. saith the Lord. Let me do the judging. Let me do the yes. recompense. You just do what I'm asking you to do. You just love them, and I'll take care of the consequences because I'm the only one that knows their heart. See, and here's what I'm trying to get us to, to, to this point. We can't let circumstances define who we are. We can't let the circumstances define the darkness around us and let that determine our light. Because the scripture says the darker it gets, the lighter we're supposed to be shining. When in fact, in my natural man, the darker it gets, the more I want to sneak down the alley and club somebody yeah. while it's dark. Yeah. <laughs> Am I, you know what I'm saying? You want to get, I want, I want to see some results here. I want to get some satisfaction. I want something done. This is so idiotic. It's insane. And somebody's got to do something. Let's call down fire, Jesus. Yeah. You don't know what light you're of. You don't know what spirit you're of. He doesn't say you have to like it. He just says you have to love it. That's a choice. All, we all got family that we love. We don't always like them. <laughs> Am I right? I'm not being cruel. I'm just saying, and it goes for me too. I mean, I'm, there's times when I'm not that likable. I'm lovable all the time. No, I'm just, your family, you love them. It's a choice. It's family. Yeah. Right? 
But I didn't like that. I didn't like what they said. I didn't like what they did. I didn't like the way they treated my kid. I didn't like the way they said that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I still love them. Yeah. I don't want bad things to happen to them. We love not because of who they are, but because of who we are. You, we are the light of the world. The world, not heaven. Our light comes from heaven, but we're the light for the world, the dark place. So we have to shine regardless and shine no matter what. And we were chosen for a time when it's going to get really dark. And we've chosen because God knows we can shine yes. and we will shine. Yes. If enough pressure is on, we'll do what we got to do. Right? If we talked about it Wednesday night, if, if, if God says, do not abandon this hill at any cost, then he expects to find either we are victorious right. or our dead bodies on the hill. Right. Now, it's kind of a crude way, but that's basically the, the bottom line. That's where we're at. We're at the place where there's no more retreating. There's no more compromising. There's no more taking in the enemy. It's we're going to fight the fight. Yes. You want to change sides? Come on over. We'll accept yes. you. We'll receive you. But if you want to keep the fight going, it's going to go until God takes us out of here. We're not going to give in. We're not yielding anymore. We're through compromising. We're through giving in. Yes. We are the light of the world. And the necessity of light is to shine. So I want to go back to the beginning. John chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. I don't mean the beginning of creation. <laughs> the beginning of where I started. Uh, John 3, 20 and 21. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God, or that they were created in God. So in the word of God, darkness is a symbol of evil. Mm -hmm. Darkness uh, is an absence. It's the absence of light, right? Because God, when God created the earth, he didn't say, uh, get out of here, darkness. He said, light be. And light came and the darkness absented. It, it's no longer there. It's absent, right? So evil's the same way. Evil is the absence. You could say it's the absence of reality because it's a, it, it wasn't part of creation. There was no evil in the creation, right? So it's, 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 it's not the creation. It's the denial of creation. It's a negation of what is. It's a negation of God. So... It can't exist on its own. But only in opposition to existence. There you go. And that means, this goes back to a little bit about what I was saying last week, truth exists of itself. It is that which is. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. God said, I am what I am. I'm independent. I don't need anything else to exist. I exist. Anything else that exists, exists because of me. Right. Even evil right. could not exist if there wasn't good. Right. Amen? So a lie can't exist without truth. I mean, we don't think about that that often, but it's so obvious how you can lie if you don't have some truth to break. Right? Right? A lie is a twisting of the truth. So it can only exist by the truth and in denial of it. So likewise, life exists without death. But death can't exist without life. 
Life doesn't have to, or death doesn't have to exist. Right. Life can exist on its own. There you go. Death cannot exist without life. Death only exists as a negation of life. And likewise, good can exist without evil. But evil cannot exist without good. Evil is the denial of good. It's the opposition. It's the force of opposition. In Hebrew, that which opposes, you're going to love this, that which goes against is called Satan, S-A-H-T-A-N, Satan. So you can have God without Satan, but you can't have Satan without God. <laughs> we only discern darkness because of the existence of light. We, like, okay, we, we understand what's false because of what's true. That's why when we hear things being said, we go, what's wrong with you? That is a lie. That is false. That's not, how do I know? Because I know the truth. And you're twisting it. What's wrong by what's right. That's why we don't teach kids how to do wrong. We teach them how to do right hoping that if right is all there is, because you can have right without wrong, but you can't have wrong without right. So evil is actually, think about this. Evil, I watch Perry Mason every now. I watch Hogan's Heroes. You're gonna think this guy is real, no. It's so, nothing. I mean, it takes no break, you don't have to think you know, watch it. Yeah. It's just so stupid. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's Star Trek. Yeah. Saturday nights, I watch Star Trek. Because mm -hmm. it's so dumb. It's so <laughs> non-intellectual. It doesn't, you don't have to think, you don't have to delve into the depth of it and try to figure this thing. It's not some Alfred Hitchcock mystery or something. It's just some stupid show with these people running around in tights and weird stuff, you know. Whoa. God, how dumb, how dumb can they be? But it makes me feel so intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and Green Acres, my God, if you haven't watched Green Acres, Arnold, Arnold the pig, Arnold, come on. <laughs> okay, Arnold, I'll change the channel. So, yeah, I'm, I'm drifting here. So evil is actually, Perry Mason, think of this now, a hostile witness that testifies to the truth. Doesn't want to, but it doesn't have any choice. It's a hostile witness. It's, it's against the truth, but, it, but the very fact that it exists is evidence of the truth. So uh, uh, it's... The witness of a shadow. The, the darkness of a lie bears witness that truth exists. Mm -hmm. John 18, verse 37 and 38. John 18, 37 and 38. I'll wrap up here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that, I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth, that everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said unto him, what's truth? The darkness of hatred is the witness that love exists. The darkness of evil is the witness that God exists. Jesus was just witnessing to the truth. 
just by being there. He didn't have to say anything. And at times he wouldn't say anything. He was just there. Yes. And their behavior gave yes. hostile yes. witness to the truth. Yes. So here's what God's saying to us. Don't lose focus. And we can do that by dwelling on CNN or even Fox News or, or on the evil. On a shadow. On what is not. And by doing that, we can obscure what really is. We have to always look beyond the shadow. Above the shadow. To the good. To God. And that's always there. Yes. It needs nothing else. No. Darkness has to bear witness yes. to the light. Yes. Darkness, this is what he said, every knee is going to bow. Yes. Every tongue is going to confess. Yes. Darkness has to bow. It's the evil has to bow. It's yes. the evil has to, it has to confess. It has to testify yes. to the goodness of God. Yes. To the light. Yes. Praise the Lord. It may bruise your heel, but you're going to crush its head. What's in your heart? Jesus, the breastplate, is going to be seen in your ephod, your heel, in your bruise. That witnesses the defeat of darkness and evil. That bruise heel yep. is a witness of a crushed head. Yes. So we struggle with being that bruised heel or dealing with the bruised heel that comes as a result of doing what God is wanting us to do. But remember, the bruised heel is only a witness that somewhere there's a crushed head. Right. We are victorious. Yes. We are more than conquerors. Yes. It doesn't mean everything's going to be pristine and everything's going to be wonderful and we'll just get to float through the, you know, the, the latter years of our life for some of us or the early years for others. It means that we're in a battle. Right. And if we don't fight the fight, if we don't light the light, right. We have to succumb to the darkness. Yes. And no matter what happens to us, yes. we're going to live forever. Yes. We're, we're more than conquered. We're victorious. Yes. We have already been resurrected. We are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. There is no more death for us. No. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's be the light. Let's be the bruised heel. And see the glory of God manifest. Let's be like the apostles and say, give us boldness to speak your word. That signs and wonders will be done by your holy child, Jesus. That's a light that will cause the darkness to flee every time. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for your patience. Have a great day. Stay warm. The heat is coming. Praise the Lord.